These are the plaintiffs, Detarius Butler and Jonah Berger. Detarius says he purchased a 1998 Buick Park Avenue from the defendant. And when they took it to the DMV, they were told they couldn't register it because there was a problem with the title. The defendant's been giving him the royal runaround ever since. He also has another car of theirs, a Nissan. Won't return it. And this guy is nothing but a scammer who must be stopped. They're suing for $894. The money they're now out. This is the defendant, Jason. He says the plaintiff, Detarius, filled out the paperwork on the title incorrectly. That's why he had a problem at the DMV. As far as the Nissan goes, the city was threatening to impound it because it didn't run and had no tags on it. So he picked it up to scrap, but the car has no title and it's now been sitting in his lot for six months. Owe oh, this guy all this money? For what? He's accused of a car catastrophe. The defendant has filed a countersuit for $2,465 for storage and tow costs. All parties, please use your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiffs purchased a 1998 Buick Park Avenue from the defendant, but they couldn't register it because the title was hinky and the DMV rejected it. Now, the defendant says the plaintiffs made a mistake in the paperwork, and that's why they couldn't get it registered. It's the case of a car cartastrophe. Can I get been sworn, Your Honor? Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, ma'am. All right, uh, Mr. Butler and Ms. Berger. Mr. Butler was in the market for a car, sees the defendant's car advertised, and you decide to go over, take a look at it, you decide to buy it. What kind of car was this? A Buick 1998 Park Avenue. Okay, old enough to drink. And what did you pay for the car? 1800 1800 <laughs> um, And then <laughs> what... Uh, there were some problems with the car when you got it from him. He's, he's a mechanic. You actually own a, a tow company, sir. Is that accurate, Mr. Yes. Jason? All right. Yes. So he tells, according to you, he's going to fix the things that are wrong with it, right? Yes. And what is it you expected him to fix? He, he fixed my tire rod, but my door handle, he hasn't fixed that. Okay. Now, according to you, you paid him some money for the door handle as well, but he never fixed it. And what was it you paid him for the door handle? I had gave him 20 to order it because I had ordered the wrong one. So I gave him 20 to order it and 20 to fix it. Okay. And how did you give him this money? In cash? Yes, ma'am. Do you have any receipts? No, ma'am. Like, who does that? Why do you hand cash? Well, who does that is a lot of my litigants. But, you know, cash doesn't leave this hand without a receipt coming into this hand. So you buy the car, for, a 1998 car from him for $1,800. Then you pay him to fix what's wrong with it. Then you pay him again. You pay him for something else. You decide that he should fix your girlfriend's windows. You talk to me, Ms. Berger. What was wrong with your electric windows? Um, my two front windows, they wouldn't go down and they, like, they wouldn't go down or come up. So he told me, once Deterius told me that he was a mechanic and he could fix it, um, we went over there so he could check it out and tell me what I needed to order for the windows. And that same day, I paid for the windows and I paid... How much did you pay? ...looking at it. I paid 25 for him to look at it and... 200 for the parts and the labor. I gave that to him cash. Okay. I have no receipt. Okay. And now, did he, did you get a, 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 an estimate from him in writing? No. For the repairs? Nothing's in writing. Everything is just, and not even text. No. Uh, but wait, there's more. Then there's a problem with the title, Mr. Butler. According to you, there's a problem with the title, and what happens? They said my um, title was messed up, and I did everything right. How come? What was wrong with your title? I think it was a notarized or something like that. So they told me to take it back to the owner that I got the car from. And I called him. He didn't answer the first time. The second time I called him, he answered. Then he said he can get in contact with the person that he got the car from. Then he called him. And then he called me back. He said, I got a bad problem. The dude was supposed to... Um, to fix the title. Um, yeah, supposed to fix the title and whatever. And then he came to my house. Then we agreed that he'd get the title in two days. So I gave him 185. Another 185, and you gave him the title? 
Yeah, I gave him 185 to get the title. He never asked for the title. Okay, he didn't ask for the title. All right. Oh, no, but wait, there's more. Then you decide, before, while nothing's getting done, all these little contracts are being entered into and things aren't moving forward, the next thing you do is you ask him about a, a car you wanted to junk. Talk to me about that. It's actually not even your car. It's your father's. The car is titled in your father's name, right, Ms. Berger? Yes. About that, we agreed on the scrap the car, so we agreed on the scrap it. He was supposed to come get the car that day and scrap it. He never said nothing about no storage or nothing, anything. We were supposed to go half on the money after, after the car get on scrap. Right, but did your father sign over the title, Ms. Berger? Yes, and he actually came to get the title that day before he came and got the car, he got the title. Okay, let me hand the floor to you, Mr. Jason. What's going on here? I mean, well, basically, the Buick, he bought that. He did, I, the title was notarized. He was told to take the title, to make sure he put all his information on the title, his name, his address, everything on the title before he took it to the BMV. I told him, I said, if you don't fill it out, they are not going to they are not going to put the title in your name. It has to be filled out before you go to them. He didn't do that. Why, he called though? Me. With everything that was going on, I should have made sure all his information was filled out on the title before he left my possession with the car. That was my mistake. Right, I but the car wasn't there. even in your name. No, no, no. The Buick, the Buick was in my, the Buick was in my name. If the title was in your name, why is it such a hassle to, to correct the title problem here? I was waiting on the title from him. I told him I needed the old title so I could see where he screwed up so I could fix it. He never brought me the old title. He kept saying, oh, I'll bring Wait, it to what? you that night. And then when I went to meet it, she was supposed to have the title and never had it. Right. So did you accept $185 to fix the title problem and then didn't take the title with you? You took the money, but not the title? Mm -hmm. He had the title with him at work when she gave me the money to do the title work. I told them I would Okay, so it she gave you $185. No, she gave me $160. Okay. According to you, she gave you $160 to fix the title. And then did she give you $225 to fix the windows? She gave me money for parts for the window tracks on a different vehicle. How much? That was something completely different. She gave me $204. And then did he give you $40 bucks for the door handle? He gave me $20 for a door handle, and he got the handle. The handle was with him when he left. When you say she gave you $204, you know in the answer to the complaint, what you actually say is she gave you $249. You're not the kind of people who should be doing things off of memory. It might have been that with tax. I, like I said, I don't have it in front of me. I don't know exactly, but I thought it was $204, oh. but it was with tax and everything like that, it probably was. Let me ask you a question. How often are you in court where it wouldn't bother you to actually get the receipt and have it in front of you and know what you're talking about when you're getting sued? You know, is this an Never. everyday occurrence for you? I would think I would make you exactly. I would think I would make you a little more nervous. All right. Now, let me ask you about the problem with the title. According to you, it was his fault. How are you going to prove that? I mean, we, we won't unless we see what they did with the title. I don't know. I've never seen the title. Let me the see title the title. The he has it. Do you have the title to the Buick, Mr. Butler? No, ma'am. They had gave me um, a new title for um, mine for the Buick. So how did you get the new title? Um, I went to the DMV, the BMV again, and um, I had, they gave me the new title, and I had to pay for the new title, and they kept the old title. All right, what happened with the car that you were picking up, Mr. Jason? What was the agreement you had with them about the car that they wanted you to junk? I was going to go out and pick the car up, and we was going to scrap it and split everything down. We was going to split it all. And then I got stuck saying, the title is no good. I have it here. It's not even in his name. I can't do nothing with it. It's been sitting here collecting right. storage for months. Wait, what is wrong with the title that they gave you? Why didn't you notice it before you towed the car? I, I, because of, I, she told me her, he did not have it. No, they're all the way in his name. Did her father sign the title over to you? No, it, my name is nowhere on it. It's a notarized title. It's notarized into her dad's name. It's not even in his, that's what I'm saying. It's not even put all the way into her dad's name for him to sign the title over to nobody. It's in somebody else's name that they got the car from. And I didn't know that when we picked the car up. Your father never registered the car, Ms. Berger? I thought that he's registered the car because he got taxed for the car. He just never got hard tax for the car, but he did have 30-day tax for the car. 
it has to the title can be notarized into somebody's name for them to get a temporary plate in the state of Ohio. But for them to get an okay. actual hard tag, they physically have to take the title to the BMV and get a hard title put all the way in their name. And that's never been done on that car. Yeah, everybody's jumping title. Nobody wants a car. Nobody's registering the car in their name. Now it's just going to get junked. But it was he doesn't have the authority to junk it based on this paperwork. So as far as that junk car, you're going to have to get that car from his place. You're going to have to get it towed. And if you don't get it towed by a certain date that I am going to proclaim now, then I am telling you, I'm giving you a judicial order that it's considered abandoned property. I'm, and then you can proceed. You know how to proceed on abandoned property, right? Yes. Yes. So then you'll be able to do something with the car. But if you don't want him to be able to lay claim to the car as abandoned property, then you hustle, pay a tow company, and get the car back. You see? You understand what I'm saying, Mr. Butler? Because yes, you can't junk two people ago's car. In fact, your father, Ms. Berger, can't junk a car that he also didn't title. All right? So I'm going to give you guys, how long do you need? Two weeks should be plenty of time to make up your minds and get a tow. I'm going to give you 14 days from today. That's how we're resolving the Nissan issue. You have 14 days to go pick up that car. After 14 days, I am going to deem it abandoned property and you proceed and put do whatever you got have to do in your state in order to junk a car that's abandoned on your lot. That's the Nissan. Well, let's talk about your counterclaim. You've got a counterclaim against them where you expect that they are going to pay you $2,465. $50 for two tires that, according to you, you put on the car that you can't do anything with. $125 for the tow. And $2,260 for 113 days of storage. Now, here's the thing. This doesn't happen to a more careful fellow because a more careful fellow wouldn't tow the car without looking at the title, right? And then you'd be out zero. Okay, one. None Two, he never asked you to tow the vehicle. You were doing a business deal where you would take the vehicle. It's not like he hired you for a tow. You were doing a business deal, he which turned out me. to be a bad he idea. He did ask me to come and get the vehicle. Title. No, no, no. You were going to be splitting the proceeds of the scrap. It was a business deal that didn't go through. Right. It was like 500, 500 to $700 is a big deal. That's how I make my okay. living. So yeah, it is a big deal. That's why there's. That's why I, I should get my storage. I the storage is legal. There's nothing wrong with what I'm charging storage. That's state law. Welcome back to the People's Court. So who's in the driver's seat in this case? Let's go back into the courtroom and find out. Did you ever send them a notice and tell them that they needed to come and get their property? He was told yes. No, he was told he needed to pay. No, to no, no. So that's not my question. We're going to talk about state law. Did you ever send him a written notice telling him that he had to pick up the property, that it was abandoned, that it's on your land, that he needs I to pick no, it up? You, you do that when you fight. Yeah, that's how I would have to file for a title, which costs me money to do. Right. And I have not done that Okay, yet. now no, that's fine. Right, because I tried to give him the benefit of the doubt to do it right. That's fine. But that's why you can't get storage. But don't worry. No, we're going to solve this problem in I bet two. You, I bet you I get my storage. No, you can't. Me. Okay. So what do we have? We have a defendant who walks away, and we have the remainder of your case, which I will handle now. You know, he thought he was going to make a big payday off of you and get several thousand dollars for storage for the problem with the Nissan. I know that that was just an honest mistake on your part. And I also know from looking at the series of texts back and forth that he just at some point just stopped responding to you until you finally threatened court. Because he sat there, he didn't answer about the windows, he didn't answer about clearing the title, he didn't. And his song about the title, let's take a look at it. Because his position wasn't, you messed up the title. What he said, to you was, it's going to take some doing. I need to set an appointment. The guy's out of town. Blah, 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 blah. He gave you a big song and dance about fixing the title. And then finally, you get frustrated and you say, I'm going to take you to court. And then everything goes down the toilet. So let's talk about what happened. I find you to be credible on the $40. Did he give you a door handle or no? No, ma'am. 
No, ma'am. I had ordered one, okay. and he told me that it was the wrong size. Okay, so you gave him $40 for that. You're telling me you gave him two twenty five for the electric windows, right? He doesn't even know. He said two oh four and then yes. when I read his answer it's two forty nine, but we, we know from you that it's two twenty five. Then there's no quite well, he says it was one sixty, but I find his credibility to be in the toilet. And you say you gave him one eighty five to to clear the title up. So that means you're out $450 right there. There are two things you want in addition to that. You want the $94 for the new title that you had to pay. And unless he can prove that the title problem was your fault, you get that $94 because it's a seller's obligation to give good title. He, it is complete guesswork on his part what was wrong with the title. And if all it needed was your signature, I'm pretty sure you would have just signed it. So there obviously was something wrong. You were able to get a new title with, at $94. Why? You just said it was lost? What'd you do? Um, I had women, they just, I had them buy this. I had told them, they, I had to go buy a whole new title. They told me, yeah, you're gonna have to buy a new title. We're gonna have to. Why would you pay him $185 to fix a title if it's only $94 to fix the title? Uh, cause I didn't know at the time because the DMV was closed, <laughs> so. He told me it's 180. Okay. All right. Well, you're entitled to that 94 as well. So I'm ruling in your favor in the amount of $544. But as for the car that is on his property, you can't just make that someone else's problem. You have to either pick it up in the next 14 days from today, or I'm deeming it abandoned property. And then he can get rid of it somehow. But you're not going to get a piece of it if he gets rid of it then. He gets the whole thing. You see? You picking up what I'm putting uh -huh. down? So if you think there's yes. actual value to it, go get that car towed back. And then your dad has to actually title it in his name so that he can then junk the car. You understand me? You can't jump title like that. Nobody can do anything with it until somebody on your side, okay. So pick up the car in the next 14 days. That's my verdict. And as for all the money you're out, I'm ruling in your favor in the amount of the $544. Let me ask you a question. How's the Buick running? Oh, it's running good now. Oh. Good for it's you. Just my door handle still not fixed. Okay, go fix the, the, the door handle. I'm getting you your money back on that. All right, that's my verdict. $544 verdict for the plaintiff. And pick up the car or it's going to be deemed abandoned, the Nissan. All right, good luck. Bunch of transactions here, the 98 Buick, the Nissan, the door handle to be fixed, etc. but nothing really in writing back and forth between the parties. Yeah, bad idea. Not a jot of information. No. The storage fees. On the counterclaim in this case, you had a massive counterclaim. Someone seeking the, the tow truck driver mechanic was asking for over $2,000. Right, but see, this isn't your average tow truck driver who tows a car and then someone leaves it on their lot. There's a mechanism for getting those charges. Right. All you have to do is prove that you gave the statutorily required notice. Right. And that doesn't, that's just a certified mailing. I mean, I don't know why he's going on about how much that would cost him. All he, you know, he would just have to start the legal process. And what, what this was, was a business deal that then couldn't happen. I got an idea. Why don't you check the title before you towed the car? Right. And always a nightmare to get your car towed to one of these impound lots. I actually had a car many years ago. I had an old Ford Mustang too. It had so much rust in the sides of it that one of the judges at the courthouse asked me if it had been in a shootout, right? <laughs> so one day I'm driving that one down the road. The air conditioner is already broken. I'm living in South Florida. One window was smashed out of it and I'm driving down the road. Wait, and all why of a sudden, was the window smashed? Because somebody stole a TV, a TV wait, wait, from the Wait, wait, you seat. left the TV in the front seat? Yes, the TV, I was going to work on a Saturday and I had to park on the street. The TV wouldn't fit in the trunk in the Mustang too. So I had to leave it on the seat. When I, in, de in downtown Miami? Yes, so I lost the window and wait, the TV. Wait, 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 back it up, was up, because I know this story. The TV was broken. Yes, it was So broken. what'd you do as a precaution to make sure nobody would steal your TV? Well, I just wrote with a magic marker, TV, TV broken. TV broken, and, and you thought on. that would save your window. It didn't save the no. window. <laughs> and the TV was broken. Somebody got a broken TV. That, uh, and you got a broken window. Right, and then I, I'm driving that car down the road. One window's gone, the air conditioner's broken, and all of a sudden I see a wheel rolling by to my left. And I'm driving thinking, look at that, somebody lost the wheel. And all of a sudden, wham, the car <laughs> falls out to the brake drum and I'm sliding down the middle of the roadway. And it was my wheel, how about that? 
Uh, so that car, when it got towed, the cost of the tow plus like two or three days storage by the time I had gotten what I thought was enough money together was more than the car was worth. So, so what'd you do? They got the car. I gave them the you title. You just handed they over said, the you car. Can have it. And they didn't insist right. on you paying anything else. No. They just said, okay, fair deal. So Jill wants to know this. Hey, Harvey, uh, what happens when someone refuses to take the oath, either for personal or religious reasons? So, you know, it used to be that the oath always said, um, so help you God at the end. And there are a lot of people who don't want to swear to God in court. So what they do is they will give you the option of affirming. So they'll say, do you swear to, do you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Do you affirm that? You have to say yes in order to testify. Um, if you don't, you just cannot testify because there have to be consequences that get imposed by that swearing. So if you don't do it, the judge is not gonna let you take the stand and testify. We'll see you next time.